the fact that these special ocean areas that are like the underwater parks that we should all be proud of, that people still aren't even really aware or understanding that these exist and why they're important. And we're still trying to get broad access and awareness of that information, that we exist, these are special places, they belong to me, they belong to you, and we should continue to conserve and protect them. My name is Claire Fackler, and I work for the NOAA Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. So I like to think of these National Marine Sanctuaries and Marine National Monuments as spectacular underwater parks. So like the Yosemites or the Yellowstones on land, but these are found completely underwater. So uh, for example, in Monterey Bay, you'll have a deep sea canyon that's very close to shore. You've got majestic kelp forests full of sea otters and sea lions, uh, killer whales. Uh, one of the largest congregations of blue whales are found in the Monterey Bay Sanctuary. Wonderful rocky intertidal areas to explore from shore. And it's just these majestic, amazing places that we can learn so much and we're trying to protect for now and future generations. So some sanctuaries protect uh, maritime heritage, shipwrecks, things of historical value. Uh, some uh, sanctuaries protect biological resources, which is really the main reason that the Monterey Bay Sanctuary is there. My name is Chad King from NOAA's Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, and I will be leading an expedition to unexplored areas of the Davidson Seamount. Essentially, that new area has been protected for about 10 years, but there's a lot that we still have not surveyed or characterized in the area. So we're going to a little area southeast of the main part of the seamount, and there's a couple of linear features and little pinnacles there that we want to characterize. And the hope is we're going to find a lot of deep sea uh, long-lived corals and sponges. And it's really important to document these areas because um, if it's very rich uh, with life there at Davidson, it could actually act as a uh, source of coral um, larvae to other areas of the West Coast. These are very different from the corals I think most people think of going on vacation in Hawaii and snorkeling. These are deep corals, uh, they're long-lived, they're slow-growing, and they live in very, very cold temperatures and in the dark. There's no light where we're going, so uh, these corals will see light for the first time essentially in their lives. Some of them actually have have certainly lived centuries. There are some species that have been known to live uh, millennia, uh, although we may not encounter those long-lived uh, specimens there. The end goal really is to just make sure we preserve these resources so that they perpetuate into the future. And like I said, we need to balance that with industry and trade and economy. Uh, but I think it really comes from the gut. Even though I'm, I'm a scientist, a lot of it is really just kind of a gut feeling. Are we doing a good job? And I think we're doing a better job every single day but there is a long way to go.